Hello Williams class, welcome to your first maths lesson of the week. For our arithmetic today, here are our questions. Three times seven. What is half of 120? What is 67 as a Roman numeral? Three ninths plus five ninths. Six times six. 16 divided by four. Write an equivalent fraction for three sevenths. 4,562 plus 3,217. 7,896 take away 5,613. 24 divided by eight. And here are your answers. Three times seven equals 21. What is half of 120? 60. What is 67 as a Roman numeral? L-X-V-I-I. Three ninths plus five ninths equals eight ninths, also known as one and one ninths. Six times six equals 36. 16 divided by four equals four. Write an equivalent fraction for three sevenths. Now you might have a different answer to me, but one way I calculated an equivalent fraction for three over seven is by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by two. Because remember, when you are writing equivalent fractions, you should always times the top and bottom number by the same number. So an equivalent fraction that I calculated was 6 fourteenths. Next question. 4,562 plus 3,217 equals 7,779. 7,896 take away 5,613 equals 2,283. And lastly, 24 divided by eight equals three. Now we are going to do an investigation today and investigation number one is all about division rules. First, we need to recap our division knowledge. So let's start by dividing 124 into four. We can use a method called the bus stop or short division method. And here's how you do it. So our question is 124 divided by four. So you put 124 under the little bus stop that we have and you put four on the outside because the bigger number always goes on the inside. Here is how to do the bus stop method. You first work in place value order. So what number comes first in 124? Number one. How many times does four go into one? It doesn't go into one any times because one is smaller than four. So you move on to the next number. What you do while you go on to the next number is keep or carry the one with you. So that one goes here and that mini one then turns the two into a 12. So how many times does four go into 12? Three, fantastic. And then move on to the next number. So we've done one, we've done two, by putting them together to make 12. The next number left is four. How many times does four go into four? One. So the answer to 124 divided by four is 31. We'll try another question together now, which is uh, 144 divided by six. So I'll just move my camera. I'll write down the question. So the bigger number goes under the bus stop and then six goes on the outside. Now, first number to work with is one. How many times does six go into one? Doesn't go in that many times. So you carry along the one and then you make this four into a 14. So cross that out because we're done with that. How many times does six go into 14? Work through your six times tables, six, 12, and we can't go more because that would be then going above 14, which is not what we want to do. So it goes into 14 two times. However, there's a remainder because six times two is 12, but we wanted to get to 14. So there's a remainder of two. So now we're working with the number, not four, but 24. And how many times does six go into 24? Use your six times table knowledge. 6, 12, 18, 24. So that is now 4 as our answer there. So 
then 144 divided by 6 equals how much? 24. And that is the bus stop method, or as some people know it, the short division method. Now it is time for the investigation. You need to pick a number that you will divide by. This is called the divisor. So right now, think of a number that you will divide by. And my rule is that it has to be between zero and 10. So pick a number between zero and 10 that you will divide by and write that number down for me. Then you are going to generate Generate means to create a three digit number to divide. Now this is called the dividend. You may want to use dice to help you to make a three digit number. So what you can do, firstly, the, your first option is just to come up with any three digit number. So if I had to come up with one off the top of my head, I could do 742. That's my three digit number. And then if I picked the number that I divide by, if I picked the number five, what I'm now going to do then is 742 divided by five. Now, if you want, on the next slide, we have these dice available. Now, you might not be able to access this at home. So what I'm going to do now is roll the dice and write down the numbers that I get to then help us to fill out our table. Now, we need at least one, two, three, four, five three-digit numbers. So. Are we ready? I'm going to roll. What number am I going to create here? Remember, I have to come up with five. So I'm just going to write actually one through to five. Just so we can remember these numbers. So my first number that I've got is, I've got a four, a three and a two. So the first number is 432. Let's keep going. What's my next number? I've got, oh, quite similar, 434. Let's roll again. We've got 341. Okay, let's roll again. Ah, I've got 522. And for the last time, let's roll. Fantastic. So I got 166. So here's how you fill out your table. You have um, a way to record your table here. So if I just full screen it, just to show you properly, this is our table here. Now, the way in which I would complete this is, say I chose to divide all of my numbers by three. I would write it as follows. My first number is 432. So I would write 432 divided by three. And then in here, you would write your answer. Try again. Our next number that we got was 434. So I would write 434 divided by three, and then a question mark. The next one, 341. So I'd write that 341 divided by three, and then a question mark. Last one together, 522. Let me show you how I would write that one too. I'd write 522 divided by three and then question mark. So what I want you to notice in particular is the fact that the number that I'm dividing by has not changed. I'm dividing every single time by the same number. I am dividing by three every single time. So pick a number that you are going to divide every digit or every number by. I picked three, you can pick whichever one you would like. And I did suggest pick one between zero and 10 just to make it a little bit easier for you to do. Once you've done this five times, so you should have five questions all together with five answers, you can make more three-digit numbers and divide by the same divisor or the same number. See how you go. Now I would like for you, having done that, to look carefully at the answers that you got. And the answers that you might have gotten could be from the numbers that I created with you, which is absolutely fine. What I would like for you to have a think about is, when is the answer a whole number? When is there a remainder of one? Can you spot any patterns? And then can you come up 
with any rules. So that is your maths lesson for today then, boys and girls. It is a little bit of an investigation with division. I look forward to seeing everything that you come up with. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.